Hello, this is Bruce with Webicator. In this video, I'm going to show you a solution Aaron Bertrand posted on the proper way to handle dates and date ranges in Microsoft SQL Server queries. Aaron agreed to let us create this video showing a solution which is available as an article on his blog at the URL shown here. For my first example, I'm going to show you a notation not to use or not recommended to use which is the slash notation when you're specifying a date. So you can see in this example in my query window that I've got the date entered as 10 slash 11 2009 and I've got it set language set to English for the first query and then for the second query I've specified Spanish as the language using the same date 10 11 2009. The problem is when I execute this query the two languages interpret the month and day differently. English interprets it as the 10th month, 11th day, and the Spanish language interprets it as 11th month, 10th day. So I don't get universal treatment using this uh, notation. So what I may try is using the dash notation where I specify the year first and then preferably the month and then the day. So we'll change this to 2009 dash instead of the slash 10 dash 11 and then I'll copy this to the Spanish query and we'll fire this but I see that I've got really the same problem this should be a more universal notation to use using the dash but the problem is the data type that I'm using date time is a little bit older type it's a smaller date time type but some languages still treat it a little bit differently as we can see in this case with Spanish if I were to convert this to date time 2 we would find that it does now treat it as year month day for all the languages so when we execute zoom in a little bit we can see that I am getting the same uh, the same behavior it's treating the dates the day and the month exactly the same no matter which language so for the later types, data types, the date time 2 as an example, this works quite well. But if I want something that's more universal for other data types like the smaller date time, then what I need to do is just remove the dashes in my query and all languages will interpret this correctly as year, month, and then day. So we can verify that. We'll execute and we zoom in and sure enough we see that both English and Spanish are interpreting the month and the day as being the same using this notation so this is a preferred notation uh, to use when entering a date or when querying for a date so this is fine if we're just dealing with date but not time on the second query window this time I'm querying a table this sum log table and it's got a date column and this date tom column includes a time value so the problem I run into with this first query is that when I query for the date 2009 10 11 I don't get any results back I get zero results back and the reason for that is SQL is interpreting this query as me looking for 2009 10 11 but at the time 00.00.00, .00 dot zero 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 and there is no row in there no record at that day with that time there are rows in there for that day but they have different time values so if I want to properly query for a range of that day the 11th then I need to actually query for a range so if I scroll down a little bit one method I might try and this does have its own problem so this is not the best way yet but one method I might try is to just convert the date column into a character string, converting it into a string, and then compare just the string values. Effectively, I'm stripping out the time by converting this into a string with just the date. And this does work. So when I execute this query, this comes back with an accurate count of 1,464 rows. However, using the column, date column, 
inside of a function, the convert function, this will create a non-chargeable query. In other words, SQL will be unable to use any index that I might have. And in fact, I actually have an index on the date column. And a little bit later on in this demonstration, I'll do a comparison with this query and a query that allows SQL to use the index just to get a performance comparison. But that's what's wrong with this query is, again, any index that I might have, SQL is not going to be able to use it because of using the conversion function around the column in the WHERE clause. So a better performance version of this query that also allows me to use some shorthand typing would to be to use the BETWEEN. So when I execute this query, this would allow SQL to take advantage of an index, but we see one slight problem. I'm getting one extra row. I'm getting 1,465, whereas before I was getting 1,464. And the problem that's causing that is that SQL is treating this as a less than or equal to this date. So I'm actually returning back rows that are on really the next day, but are set for midnight of the next day. And so it's not necessarily very accurate using the between. Really the best way to query this would be to write it out a little bit more using an AND, and then to specify that I want the date range greater than or equal to 2009, 10, 11, and then less than 2009, 10, 12. See, the between would make that actually a less than or equal to. So when I execute this query, I get the proper count of 1,464. Now, if we want to do a performance comparison between the two, let's copy this query down a little bit so that I can execute both of them side by side. And what we'll do is we'll add the query execution plan to the query. So I'll include the actual plan, select both my queries, execute both at the same time. I get the same number values, 1,464. But when I switch to my execution plan, we'll zoom in a little bit, we can see that the query that is using the string or converting the data into a string is taking up 99% of the uh, time relative to the whole batch, whereas the one that is not converting it to a string, but using the date range, this is allowing me to use my index. And we can see that because I've got a clustered index seek versus a index scan. So I'm getting much better performance from the fact that I have an index on that column and I'm able to do the index seek. So definitely much more preferable to use the date range rather than using um, rather than converting it into a string. Well, that's it for this video. I encourage you to visit Aaron's blog. You can see the same examples. Actually, you can see more examples, more detailed examples. And Aaron includes the code for setting up this uh, test, this demonstration, as well as some more performance comparisons between the different types of usage of dates, best practices, not so good practices. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.